So I know that many of the aficionados of vintage and classic men's fragrances uh, hold very dear to them Leonard Poron. However, there are other fragrances from the House of Leonard which are worth seeking out. Uh, in this video, I will be showcasing the house. Stay tuned. Hi there, welcome back. Sadly, today isn't quite as sunny as that intro, uh, which I recorded a few days ago. So today I'm going to be discussing some fragrances from the House of Léonard Paris. Uh, this house was founded in 1958. Um, just a few notes, uh, because I don't want to focus too much on the designer house itself, but the fragrances. Um, it is well known for its innovation in fabrics, its orchid emblem, um, and its floral prints. If you want some more information on the designer house itself and its history and some detail behind it, um, I would recommend visiting leonardparis.com. So to get started, uh, the oldest fragrance that I have from the collection is this one right here. So I don't have Fashion, which was their premier fragrance um, from 1970. Um, but what I do have here is actually from 1977. This is Tamango. And Tamango, um, the perfumer, I haven't been able to track down exactly who composed this. Uh, this is a Sheeper Floral. It's beautifully aldehydic, rosy, mossy, um, definitely unisex. I'm going to give it a little spray here. I haven't done an official review of it. Mm. It, it smells like a rose sparkling wine in that opening. And from what I recall wearing this one time before, it does get spicier and somewhat richer, but this is a rather sheer scent. Um, that is not to say it doesn't have any heft at all to it because those aldehydes, they really um, have volume to them. Um, it's a beautiful scent. And uh, I do believe you can even find that this particular older version, vintage version with the cream colored cap for not too much. Um, it's a beauty. And it is a, a nostalgic classic scent. Um, there's a little bit of jasmine and lily of the valley that I can detect in my nose, even though jasmine's not in the in the notes pyramid. I do get that. Do you hear that dog? Because I do. I need to shut up. Um, yeah, it th there is this white floral um, that comes in just a minute or so after those. Uh, sparkling aldehydes. Yeah, I like it a lot, and I will be doing an official review of this rather soon. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is uh, the one that has garnered a lot of attention um, within the community of uh, vintage men's fragrance enthusiasts, and rightfully so, as this happens to be one of my favorites um, from that time period. This was released in 1980. Uh, the composer was uh, Ron Rudigrad, and uh, he's also known for another discontinued uh, favorite, um, Dunhill Blend 30. Uh, he also did Balenciaga Rumba, uh, Bogart Furio, another uh, beloved uh, fragrance from the 80s, uh, Lagerfeld Classic, and curiously enough, uh, loves Baby Soft. Um, that's uh, a little incongruous to everything else, but hey, that must have helped him pay the bills, that's for sure. So, Leonard Pour Homme. This one was re released in 1980, if I hadn't already mentioned it, and it is a leather fragrance, but what I detect in this is a predominantly a carnation and castorium. 
Um, this kind of is in the same vein as Van Cleef and Arpels, but a, a different tint to it. It's not redundant at all. I, I love this one, actually. I'm going to spray it right here. And that's glorious. Um, it, the opening to me is just breathtaking. Mm. And there's an orus in this as well. It's carroty. In fact, the notes pyramid has carrot, which I find intriguing. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but according to Vagrantica, uh, at least a carrot top note. And um, there is some florals that are going on as well. Um, definitely some herbs, some aromatics, thyme. Thyme is a, is a terrific note in men's fragrances. It really brings out a lot of those um, woody, leathery qualities in other notes. Uh, thyme is delicious. <laughs> It's great with chicken, and it's great in fragrances. <laughs> Just makes me think of Bell's seasoning. But this doesn't smell like Bell's seasoning. Maybe just a tiny bit. But that's nice. I like that. Yeah. So I will also be doing a proper review of this in the near future. Leonard pour homme eau de toilette. Next in line, this is from 1983, Balahe. And wow, this is so under the radar um, compared to other amber, floral, spicy, plummy scents. Um, this was composed by Daniel Moliere, who also did Santos de Cartier. Um, and Sensei from Givenchy, I almost said Givenchy, and uh, interestingly enough, he worked with Diptyque in composing Tam Dao. Um, this is nothing like any of those, really. This is such a plummy, ambery, resinous, voluptuous white floral, it's just so dense and rich and indulgent. Um, and I have this thing for plum and prune and fragrance. It re I really gravitate towards that. So when I learned that this had a prominent plum note, I had to give it a try. So. Mm. So textured. It's just... It's so uh, indulgent to me. It's really over the top, but not, not, not to the point where it's overwhelming. Um, this would be perfect to revisit um, in the winter, like in the dead of winter. This would be so cozy and so snuggly. <laughs> Yeah, there's a woodiness to it. Um, there's a pop and axe. There's a lot of a pop and axe in it, actually. Um, you know, there have been restrictions to a pop and axe resin, and uh, since then, the a pop and axe accord has had to be um, built up with those restrictions with other resins and other you know, aroma chems and materials. But there's a lot of a pop and axe in this. And a bit of civet, uh, which just makes everything in this just bloom even more. That's what civet does. It, you know, people have this association with civet as being sort of pissy and super animalic and off-putting and or, or, or dirty. But often, you know, civet isn't really so... Um, extreme like that it really is an underpinning for the composition it's something to to bring out the best in florals and 
any other aspect of a fragrance. It's just like this, this al alchemy that happens from having a tiny bit of civet or anything that works the same way as civet does. And uh, here it isn't, it isn't at all pissy. It's just has that certain je ne sais quoi that I love um, that, uh, that civet adds to a composition. So there you have it, um, Balahe. And then next, we fast forward to 1989. This is a Leonard de Leonard. This was uh, released in 1989 and composed by Roger Pellegrino. He also worked on Cacherel's classic uh, lily fragrance, Ane Ane or Anais Anais. Um, the beloved citrus aromatic uh, Armani O Pour Homme, and another one, Versace Lung, and uh, Bogart One Man Show, Rocha Massacre, uh, Massacre, <laughs> Massacre, ah! <laughs> Macassar, Macassar, um, but yes, Leonard, uh, did Leonard is for those who love the green galbanum hyacinth with the mossy base there's some spiciness you have carnation um, there's woodiness there's a little bit of lily of the valley this kind of reminds me if kind of reminds me if uh, you have certain elements of Fiji that are bonded to aromatics elixir with a very green top spray this one mm. It's a Leonard Nifur. Yeah. This is very gold and green. Um, it's rosy too. A little bit of a laggy lag that's synergizing with the galbanum and the aldehydes. And in the dry down, it gets muskier and a little bit more orris goes playing in, coming in with the other, with the other elements, playing in, going in, um, doing its thing. Uh, yes. Uh, I do actually want to give a shout out to Jane Daly because, uh, and she's known for Eau de Jane. She's fantastic check her out on um on instagram i'll actually add her instagram profile to the video description leonard did leonard she recommended that i check this out and i think you can still get this for not too much even though it's been discontinued and lastly we have this number for 1992 this is monsieur leonard and uh, Monsieur Leonard was actually composed also by Ron Winograd. So he did uh, Leonard Pour Homme and he did Monsieur Leonard. This is an electric, fluorescent, green, woody fougere. It's like if ferns were bioluminescent, it's really just a, a, an over the top, hyper, hyper glowing kind of fouge, aromatic fougere. Um, and unfortunately the sprayer isn't ideal. So I'm just sort of squirting it out. <laughs> there we go. It's kind of pathetic, but yeah, you know, one of the hazards of buying older fragrances. Yeah, so really wet, really green, really leafy, um, geranium, some cloves, basil. Mm -hmm. And I think one element that enunciates or accentuates the greenness is having this lily of the valley accord it isn't really front and center but it's there 
and most likely, most likely um, an addition of lilial, lyral, hydroxy, citronel, one of those, all of those that I think contribute to that fluorescent glowing kind of white floral green uh, combination. <laughs> Um, it's a fun one. I like it. Another one that isn't necessarily a unicorn. It isn't one that a lot of people are discussing. Um, you could pick it up for not too much, uh, either as a splash or a spray. And there you have it, Monsieur Leonard. And, uh, keep in mind that earlier, uh, this summer, I did a video of another Leonard fragrance that, uh, you should check out that video. It's uh, all, um, all fresh, and uh, that's a great one as well. So tune into that one, and that is my profile of Leonard the House. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button for notifications of new videos. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any fragrances from Leonard, and if so, which ones, and why do you like them? Or if there's some that you're not so crazy about, hey, this isn't an echo chamber. We can have a healthy debate, or maybe I just happen to agree with you. Um, and until next time, I will see you soon.